Hey everyone, um, we are going to take some notes over text structures. So hopefully you already put um, this into um, notability. So when we're talking about text structures, we are talking about nonfiction. So if you'll go ahead and write that somewhere on your notes, that's just something really important to talk to remember. Remember, nonfiction are things that are um, real. It's factual information, usually going to have statistics, numbers, and so forth. So there's five different types of text structures. So we're going to first start with problem and solution. So feel free to write things down with me. If you need to pause, take a minute to pause and to get caught up. So the first one we're gonna talk about is problem and solution. In this type of text structure, the author will introduce a problem and tell you how the problem could be or has been fixed. There may be one solution to fix the problem or several different solutions mentioned, okay? So a real life example of a problem and solution um, type of text or um, type of structure is when advertisements in magazines or TV for products. So just think about it, we see this all the time. If you have um, yellow teeth, use this perfect toothpaste to make your teeth white. So it gives you a problem, yellow teeth, it gives you a solution, this whitening toothpaste that will be able to fix your problem. So really problem solution is just identifying what the problem is and then what are the solution or solutions to fix the problem, okay? Again, pause if you need to get caught up. So the next is cause and effect. So this type of text structure can be can sound really similar to problem solution, but there is a big difference because the author is going to describe, they describe something that has happened which has had an effect on or caused something else to happen. It could be a good effect or it could be a bad effect. There may be more than one cause and there may also be more than one effect. A real life example of a cause and effect um, type of text structure would be like a newspaper article that was written about it, a volcanic eruption which had an effect on flights and tourism. Another real life example of cause and effect would be COVID and how that had, um, COVID caused a lot of issues um, and had a major effect on tourism, flights, people seeing their family, holidays, and so forth. So really it's important for us to figure out, especially with cause and effect, is, is, it a, is it a problem being introduced or is an event being introduced? And then what happens as a result of that? Or is it a problem and then is there a solution to it? Okay. So. The third type of text structure that we're going to focus on is compare and contrast. This is where you see that Venn diagram. That's going to be really important. This is when the author's purpose, so we've studied that before, the author's purpose is to tell you how two things um, are the same and how they are different by comparing them. Okay, 
a real life example will be a bargain hunter writing an article about buying brand items and how it compares with buying name brand items. So we do this. Um, I do the grocery shopping in my family. So I do this all the time when I go to the grocery store. I'm looking at the mac and cheese. Now is the Kroger brand mac and cheese any cheaper than the um, Kraft mac and cheese? We do this all the time. We compare things all the time. How are they similar? How are they different? So in writing, that's one, um, that's something that we need to make sure that we are trying to figure out. Um, and it will also help us figure out the author's purpose. Okay. The fourth type is description or list. So in a descriptive or a list type of text, um, with this structure, the author is often going to tell a lot of information or they're going to list facts about a certain subject. It's up to the reader to determine what he or she thinks is important and sometimes even interesting enough to remember. So in a description or list, this is gonna be kind of like a basic nonfiction text. It's gonna give a topic and it's just gonna describe it. So if you're reading something that's about, if you're reading something that's like about an animal or like a frog or something like that, it's just gonna be, it's just gonna describe it. That's all it's gonna do. It's not gonna persuade us. It's not gonna compare and contrast it to anything else. It's not gonna do cause and effect. It's just gonna describe what it looks like. Another real life example is a soccer coach um, writes a letter describing to parents exactly what kind of cleats to buy for their kids. So just describing, they need to be this brand, this color, pick the size which happens, or this price, go to this store. It's just describing them. So the last type of text structure is time order or sequence. We're also gonna see this word a lot with it, chronological, so be sure to write that down, okay? So when you think of chronological, you wanna think of time order or sequence. This is when information in the text is written in a specific order or timeline format. A real life example would be like recipes, um, directions, or events in history. So anytime we read something that it's giving dates and it's going in order, it's most likely going to be written in chronological order. Okay, so we have all five. If you need to, pause right now and get caught up um, so you can um, ha get all this written down. So our five different text structures are problem solution, cause and effect, compare and contrast, description or list, and time order or sequence. Those are the five text structures. Now, what we're gonna do on this next page or on the back, so flip this over on the back when you're ready, we're gonna talk about the thinking maps that go with it, and then we're gonna talk about signal words um, and how we know we're reading a text that is about those things, okay? So, let's start with description. Now, let's talk about what type of thinking map this is. This type of thinking map is called a circle map. It always reminds me of like a sunshine, a ray of sunshine. Okay. So this is the type of thinking map we will use when we are talking about description or list, because you'll put the topic in the middle right here, and then all the things that describe it on these little rays of sunshine. Okay. So we use that type of thinking map to help us describe something. Now, the type of signal words or the transition words we could say that do that um, we will see with um, this type of text are sorry friends um, such as for example
for instance, most important, in front, beside, or near. So these are the type of transition words we typically see with this type of text. Okay. All right. So a signal to a reader, if we see a list oops, or set of characteristics that are going to follow the topic, we will probably see a colon to list Idea. So basically, when we're talking about description, we're looking for lists, okay? So that really is the thing that's going to help us identify it, okay? Now, the next one's a se sequence, order, chronological. This is a flow map. So yes, I want you to write down what type of maps these are called, just for your knowledge. So typically when we write in order or we see a text that's written in sequential order, we're going to see signal words or transition words like first, second, third, before, on, like on a date, not long after, after that, we'll see the words next, at the same time, finally, and then. So remember that when we're talking about in sequential order, it is a sequence of events or steps in a process that's being described. I think about like when you're making something, you need that. That's really important. I think about when you're um, reading about maybe a battle or a war, you need all the events that led up to it and everything that happened after it. All those are important. Okay. All right, compare and contrast. This is called a Venn diagram. We've been doing them. So hopefully you know how they work by now. So we use a Venn diagram for compare and contrast. So if you remember in the center is how they're similar um, and the outside are how they are different. So we're gonna see transition and signal words um, like like <laughs> and like. We're going to see the word but in contrast, on the other hand, however, both also to and as well as. Those are some of the signal words or transition words. And remember, we're looking at the similarities and differences that are being presented and or discussed. So if I were to give you something to compare and contrast, you could should be able to figure out how to use a Venn diagram to understand it all. And last but not least, cause and effect and problem solution are going to be the same one. And this is called a multi-flow map, okay? So in a multi-flow map, you put the topic in the middle, and if this was cause and effect, you do cause, 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 and then you do effect, effect, effect on this side. Okay? Now, if this was a problem and solution in the middle, you'd still put the topic. You would put problem, 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 if there's more than one on this side, and solution, solution, solution on this side. That's why they both use the same, oops, the same type of map, okay? So when we're talking about cause and effect, the signal words or the transition words that we'll see are therefore, so, this led to, as a result, because, and if, then, okay? Um, and this is going to show evidence, evidence of causes and effects. And they'll be given or problems and solutions will be described. The topic always goes in the middle. Okay, so just to recap. For description text, we're going to use a circle map and we're going to list things out. That's the whole purpose. For a sequential or chronological order, we're gonna use a flow map, and the goal is to put things in order in which they happened, okay, in order, sequence of steps, in order, okay? And 
Um, for compare and contrast, we're going to be using a Venn diagram. That's the thinking map that correlates to it. And we're going to be looking at similarities and differences. And then last but not least, for cause and effect and problem solution, we're going to use a multi-flow map for both. And the topic will always go in the middle. And the goal is to figure out the causes and effects or the problems and solutions of that topic. Now for the signal words, these are just some of them. There are more transition words or signal words out there, but these are just some of, the, some of them. So I'm going to stop this video for now. If you need to go back and finish anything, please go back and do that. And then um, you'll move on to the next task in Schoology.